What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I feel like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of P90X, Atari, many more, and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. This is part of the e-commerce mastery series where top sellers and experts will teach you what really works to boost your e-commerce business. And our sponsor is Rise25.com, where entrepreneurs of six, seven, and eight-figure businesses come together live and in person every few months to solve their biggest business challenges and leave with lifelong friendships. Uh, check out rise25.com. It's run by myself, my co founder, John Corcoran. It's application only. And today we have, well, you've already heard from him, Charlie Moyer, who went from unemployed. Usually I check this ahead of time, but um, I do a lot of research ahead of time, so we'll assume it's right. You can correct me. We have Charlie okay. Moyer, who went from unemployed military veteran with no e commerce or online marketing experience to growing his men's grooming company, Badass Beard Care, from 3000 per month to three. 375000 uh, in monthly sales. It all started with a simple $20 investment, and now he employs over 12 people in their El Dorado Hills facility. Yep. Well, actually, now for the holidays, we're up closer to about 17. 17. Yep. Charlie, thanks for joining me. Charlie, you were in the military for 10 years, right? So yep. tell me a crazy war story, military story. What, what was one of the crazier, unless it's top secret? Do you, do you want gory? Do you want funny? What, what kind of story do you want? Either or. Whatever comes to mind for you is was one of your top two favorite stories. Top two. Favorite. Maybe maybe gory and a funny one. Okay, I'll I'll do one of each. Yeah. So uh, the funny one is that my uh, I, I was stationed in Key West, Florida, and we did all the the drug and mi- migrant sm- uh, smuggling operations down there, and I was the, the boarding officer for that. But they sent me to EMT school so that I could be the EMT for the ship. And then about a week after I came back, uh, we were all at the strip club, and this stripper uh, collapsed on stage, and I saved her. And so they called me Dr. Savaho. He- <laughs> Horrible. <laughs> You're on the news. Oh, my God. Well, the, the, so the, the command refused to give me an award um, for you know, any kind of life saving award because they felt that the situation would bring discredit upon the service. It's it's sort of a double-edged sword, right? It you is. You saved it someone, is. but where were you at the time when you saved someone? <laughs> so uh, they, they didn't get me an award or anything like that, but but when I left my departing plaque, um, it had a, the nickname Dr. Sabah on it. So, so were I, there crazy wedding speeches? Like did people actually tell that story at your wedding? Or did they refrain from embarrassing you? Uh, you know, I'm really hoping that uh, no one from my wedding sees this interview because <laughs> they, they don't know about it. Your wife does. That's all that matters. So. Yeah, she, okay. she, she, she knows it. Okay. Um, and then see a... Uh, well, thank whole... you for saving someone, no matter who it is that, you know, that's that's the important thing. Yeah. So I got, I got two horror stories, uh, one end bad, one end good. So uh, do you remember the, the earthquake that happened in, in Dominican Republic that caused, you know, the whole... The tsunami and everything to collapse and yeah. it was just a disaster. So we were actually on the island when the earthquake hit. Oh my god! Because you know we're stationed out in Key West and we're doing all the migrant operations and smuggling operations and we caught a couple of drug smugglers and we're bringing them back to uh, uh, Domrep. The stars Haiti where the quake happened. So we're bringing back to Domrep, which is the other half of the same island. So we're in, on Domrep and uh, port call. So we're all drinking and sitting inside this hot tub, and all of a sudden it's like, hey, do you, do you guys feel that? <laughs> And uh, about an hour later, we got an emergency call. Get back to the ship. Get underway. So we get underway, and uh, you know all these all these Haitians are trying to flee. You know, just, just get away from the island. You know, the whole country is in chaos, and now is their time to try to make a break for it. Yeah. So uh, we found a 35 foot sailboat with 216 people on board. Wow. And uh, they were literally people just stacked on top of people, stacked on top of people, laying on top of each other. And uh, there was an infant on board, and the mom wrapped the uh, life vest, like cable, around his neck, and ended up accidentally suffocating him. Oh so, my gosh! Yeah, but uh, we went over there in our, our small boat, uh, 
got on, got got the baby unresponsive, uh, did CPR, and we actually brought him back. Wow! So that's amazing. That that was the the happy one and ended good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the other one we had uh, some migrant smugglers that were going from Cuba to Florida, and uh, one of the migrants got knocked down while we're chasing them on the back on the back of the boat that we're chasing, and they didn't stop, and they really choppy seas. So this guy's head was just. Bound, bound, bound oh man for about 45 minutes and so by the time we stopped them and got on board uh his, he was just mush oh Nothing my happened. that's horrible yeah so you've seen some crazy things yeah it was uh, so I was, I was only two years of my career when i was in key west and those it was a crazy two years so i'm gonna i'm gonna Transition back to badass beard care, but I okay. thank you for telling some of those war stories because I knew you'd have yeah. some crazy ones. I did not expect you reviving a stripper as one of the, the stories, <laughs> but um, <laughs> I, would, I wouldn't have either. Um, but I want to know how you went from you initially. You did these small batches and producing yep. it. How did you go from that to producing it at more of a scale? So when we first started making it, everything was getting melted down in like a small double boiler on a stove. Um, so we were only making about 50 ounces of product at a time. Yeah. And then so once we had the capital built up just before last Christmas, so right about the same, same time that we transitioned over to ShipStation to, to help there, um, we invested in this candle making machine. So we can do 3,000 ounces at a time now instead of 50 ounces. Mm. So we uh, we can make a much larger scale, and thank goodness because, like I said, as as sales kept increasing, we really needed that. Otherwise, we would have been SOL. What's the hardest part about the manufacturing and packaging side of things? Like getting it from the like oil into the bottles or labeling. What what seems to be the most challenging? Um, honestly, I think it's just finding the right employees to get it there. Yeah, because the, the process in itself is not challenging. Um, the, the challenging part comes in trusting someone else to duplicate this product that you've created. Mm -hmm. So an another reason for that math question is just, you know, we, we have people that you, you hire these guys, and it's you'd think that putting a label in the very center of a product would be common sense, and they do it every time. But then you go out there and you look at it, and half of them are like, you know, the labels are are halfway on the tin and sliding off or whatever. So. It, it, it's just it's just been finding employees that have the attention to detail and that really care about what they're doing. Yeah, I think that's the biggest part. If, yeah. if they care, I, I tell everyone treat you know every every product we make, every package we send, treat it as if you're making it for a family member as a gift or that you're sending it to a family member as a gift. So you know you don't want to just throw stuff in a bag. Um, you you don't want to just you know scramble some ingredients together and call it good. Yeah. So that's that's been the hardest yeah. part. Trey, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. I have one last question yeah. I always ask since it's Inspired Insider. I always ask, um, what's been the lowest moment business-wise? Um, and then what's been the proudest moment business-wise for you? The lowest? I haven't had very many low moments in the business so far. Um, again, I mean, it's funny. Every, just about every challenge that I've faced so far has been related to employees. Mm. Just you know, finding good help. So we had we had a, a guy actually. I don't I don't want to say his name or anything. Yeah, we don't have to out him here now. Uh, he was a really good employee. Um, like you know, he started out as just kind of a seasonal help and and just proved himself to be really valuable to the company. And then went through some you know some bad personal stuff. Yeah. And it was like a switch. You know, yeah. all of a, all of a sudden it was just attitude and showing up late. And then just recently, in the last few weeks, uh, three days straight where no call, no show, didn't didn't tell us, didn't tell his family, didn't tell anybody, just disappeared for three That's days. Scary. And you know, coming into the holiday season, I really need reliable people. Right. And so it was a very very tough call to make, especially because I, I like him, yeah. and he was he was a great worker. We have these uh, competitions between our employees because a lot of the tasks get tedious. So we have, you know, uh, twice a day there's a contest where everyone sits down and they all compete to try to do something the fastest. And if they win, they get a point. And at the end of the week, the person with the most points gets a $25 gift card. You know, second place gets a $10 gift card. So he actually won last week. Yeah. And then just no call, no show, three days in a row after that, and I, I had to fire him. Wow. And it, it was like a really tough call to make. He was a good worker. I really liked him, but it comes just down to – being consistent. 
Did you, what did he say? He, he disagreed with my decision, but understand, understood why I was doing it. And like I said, I, I didn't, I didn't want to, you know, d- dealing mm-hmm. with, with, with employees and having, having to fire is probably the hardest part. I, I like people. Yeah. You know, I like to make, I like to make people happy. I'm, I'm customer service focused. You know, that's, that's, that's the, the main, the main focus for business, making sure people are happy. So to so have a guy that I personally enjoy hanging out with and that was a stellar employee. It's a tough decision. Sudden, yeah, all of a sudden just going, you know, flipping a switch and having to make that decision right before the holidays. You know, if, if this was summertime, I might have had a little more leeway, but I got to have people in there that I know are going to be there. Otherwise, yeah. the business is yeah. yeah. All so, hands on deck, no pun intended, yeah. right? And then the yeah. proudest moment, I've had a lot of proud moments, man. Um, so our biggest, our biggest day in sales uh, was last December, and we broke $15,000 in sales in a day. Wow. And that was a, a, a really proud moment. I felt like at that moment, you know, I'd, I'd kind of made it. Yeah. Uh, so that was, that was a really, really proud moment. And uh, yeah, I mean, just every, every day, th- th- things make me proud. You know, I, I see the way that, that our customers talk about our products or talk about our company. Yeah. And we have like a, a very loyal fan base. People that like our products love our products. They yeah. love the company. They love what we stand for. And they tell everyone they know about it. So just seeing that daily yeah. makes me proud constantly. Yeah. And talk about your wife's role in the company <laughs> a little bit. So... Uh, she was really, really awesome, especially for the first month. Um, cause I'd be up, you know, all night talk, talking to people, trying, trying to get people to try the products, trying to find vendors to make our accessories or our apparel. Um, I, I'd, all of like all of our accessories or combs and stuff I designed myself. So I'd stand up all night doing all that stuff. And then she, uh, was a RN, a registered nurse. So she was working 12 hour days. So she would get up at four o'clock in the morning, right about the time I went to bed. Mm. She'd get up, get up at four o'clock in the morning and start printing the orders, so that when I woke up, I didn't have to go to the computer and sit down and try to do all that. I could get up and pack the orders and then go start making products. So, wow. for the first few months, she she you know, in her off time, bless her, you know, twelve hour shifts as a nurse is not easy. Yeah, but uh, she was helping just with the grunt work, and then uh, then she got pregnant, and then she said she couldn't stand the smells and she kicked me out of the house. So, she was <laughs> she, she she was instrumental in in uh, making this no longer a home based business. 